Well, we were all a little shocked when Joe Biden revealed his idiotic disinformation governance board a few weeks back, AKA the Ministry of Truth. It's just never a good idea to have the lying liars who lie be the ones who investigate the lies of the lying liars. You know, in general, just kind of a crappy idea. Luckily, you have me, someone who will stand up for you and battle the disinformation in the battle against disinformation. Someone to fight the falsehoods in the fight against falsehoods. Someone to wave the red flag at the bull as he covers us all with bulls. Well, you know, you get the idea. That's why I have created the Ministry of Stooth. No longer will you fall victim to the propaganda Joe Biden disguises as the incoherent mutterings of an incontinent old man or the properly spoken and printed propaganda from his cabinet and the mainstream media. We are here to finally and totally give you the God's honest stooth. One question remains, though. Can you handle the stooth? Well, you're going to have to because it's starting right now. TV.com slash stew is the place to go to join Blaze TV. Join the movement. Be with us today. Use the promo code stew to save 10 bucks. Dan Andros joins us today from Noah's Ark. I No, really, he really did. Uh, Tom Brady, you know, too many good things happen to Tom Brady, and that's a problem. He's taking all of your good things, and he's hoarding all of the good things in the world for himself. We'll get into that in a little while. But we start by doing the pro-choice deception. You know, when we first came up with the incredible idea of the Ministry of Stooth, people, people shuddered and they said, what a stupid name. Is it supposed to sound like truth? Like, what's the, what's the, what's the point? But here's the thing. You do need someone to bring to you the actual fact check of the actual fact checkers. This is a huge problem we have in our country right now. The Ministry of Stooth can only do so much. Fact checkers are everywhere, and we will be there to fact check them as this goes. And a lot of this is going on with the case of the Roe versus Wade leaked opinion from Justice Samuel Alito. There are a lot of claims, and I think we might go through a few of them this week. Just take a few minutes every day to go through the nonsense that is spreading uh, around social media, mainstream media, uh, about this ruling and what it will actually mean and accomplish. So let's start with this claim. And, and the claim is, has been pretty much everywhere, that this is not just about Roe versus Wade. All of a sudden, that's not enough. Now, it means that this opinion will overturn basically everything you hold dear. Uh, you're, if you happen to be married to someone of a different uh, gender, if you happen to be, or, or the same gender, a lot of people are married to the different gender, uh, if you happen to be married to someone of a different color, uh, all these things are on the line now, and this is being repeated ad nauseum by every single person on the left or in the mainstream media. But what is the truth here? Let me start with CNN. Here is CNN talking about the slippery slope. And I cannot believe that I'm sitting here, Jim, in the year of 2022, a right that I was born into a society that had, that my mother had, that my grandmother had, that my great grandmothers in her lifetime had, that with the stroke of a pen, someone can simply say a fundamental right that is within a zone of privacy that the court has said should be hands off for the government with the stroke of a pen can be taken away. There are a lot of things now on the chopping block. And Steve, you mm -hmm. spoke about an earthquake. Well, a familiar phrase is a slippery slope in the Supreme Court. That which you do in one area could extend to others. Well, fundamental rights include interstate travel, include no. the idea of same-sex marriage, no. include same-sex relationships, just to name a few. Now, this is essentially gone. What's next? Yeah, what, what, what is next? First of all, her great-grandmother had the right... I mean, what is she, I mean, guessing 40? I don't know, 40? Go back, great-grandmother. I mean, great-grandmother could have been around. I don't know if she would have been child-rearing age at that particular moment, but 
Yeah, that's that's not the fact check we're here for. Uh, frankly, we want to talk about the, what she said at the end. Hey, this is going to reverse interstate travel. It's going to reverse uh, gay marriage. You're going to reverse same sex, uh, same sex marriage. And of course, uh, interracial marriage. Then we have here's Joe Biden basically making the same argument. If this decision holds, it's really quite a radical decision. Um, mm. And again, the underlying premise. And again, I've again. not had a chance to thoroughly go into the report. But you're going to talk about it anyway. Decision. Obviously, but it basically says all the decisions related to your private life, who you marry, whether or not you decide to conceive a child or not, whether or not you can have an abortion, a range of other decisions, whether or not how you raise your child. What does this do? uh, And does this mean that in Florida they can decide they're going to pass a law saying that same sex marriage is not permissible? It's against the law in Florida. Uh, so there's a whole, it's, it's a fundamental okay. shift. Again, I've had just, enough of Joe here. here. Here's the thing. This is just, this is a piece of advice directly from the Ministry of Stuth to you, Joe Biden. Maybe you should actually read the ruling before you talk about it. That is, a, it's an outlier theory. It's a little bit of a crazy one. We're out on the fringes of intellectual thought here. But maybe... You should look at it before you comment on it. Uh, but, you know, there's, it's, it wasn't just, uh, of course, Joe Biden. It was also Amy Klobuchar. Here she is. If you look at what he says, abortion, the word's not in the Constitution. Well, birth control's not in the Constitution. Mm. And that also uses a similar argument in past cases for a right to privacy. Uh, the term marriage, gay marriage, is not in the Constitution. Mm. The court has interpreted the Constitution to protect these rights for Americans. So that is why this is such a big deal. That's why it's such a big deal. That's why. Hmm, interesting. Okay, here's Tammy Duckworth. She is talking also about basically the exact same thing. Think about things that are uh, that are dependent on rule. I went through IVF. In vitro fertilization would be put in jeopardy. Some of the procedures that my doctor performed to implant a fertilized egg into me that resulted in their destruction of some of those fertilized eggs would be considered manslaughter. Well, people who want to start families won't be able to start families. So wait till people find out that some of these enumerated rights that are not deeply uh, embedded to the Constitution, like the right to contraception, the right to um, not send your kids to public schools, uh, all of these rights could be taken away. If, if, if abortion rights does not get you angry, then I sure as heck believe that people are going to be angry when they realize how many things could be taken away. Interracial marriage, interracial marriage, uh, gay marriage, there's all sorts of rights that are not enshrined in the Constitution. Nowhere in the Constitution is the word privacy uh, written about. And so, you know, this, this decision is going to gut literally decades and 100 years of precedence when it comes to um, the legal system in this country. hesitate to even point it out, but Tammy doesn't seem to understand what the word enumerate means when she's specifically talking about things that aren't listed in the Constitution. And then she's saying that some of your enumerated rights may go away, which specifically means the ones that are listed in the Constitution. She she literally used the word in the exact opposite way that it's defined as. I I don't, you know, at some point, at some point, we have to have a basic expectation that people n- understand the language. I, I, I don't know. How, how do we deal with this? Do we have a policy? I, 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 at some point, the people talking are so dumb, you can't really fact check them, can you? I, I think we should take, take Tammy Duckworth out of the Ministry of Stuth part because she's not, she, does not, she doesn't qualify. And Biden, too. He didn't even read it. Just take it out. Okay, we're taking those out. Um, Here's the uh, America's ultimate Karen, Liz Warren, talking about this. When you read Justice Alito's opinion, what he focuses on is history. And he says, we don't have to protect uh, access to abortion because historically we haven't had that access. Boy, that ought to make your gay friends nervous because... We don't have a long history of protecting equal marriage. Yeah. We don't have a long history of protecting interracial and he marriage. Yeah. We don't have mm-hmm. a long history of protecting access to contraception. Yeah. All of those things that we have now counted on and said, that's the America we are. 
could potentially under Justice Alito's own analysis go out. This is the reason we cannot have a right-wing fringe court dictate to the rest right. of America. Right. I, if, if you were to torture a cat, that is the sound that would come out of it. Just, I mean, I'm not, I didn't even see the, the Netflix documentary because it's too dark. I can't, I can't put myself through it. But uh, if, I assume, as you're watching the Netflix documentary and they're torturing cats, you just hear Liz Warren's voice. That's what I would hear. Um, so you get the point here? This is, here's, let me give it to you even clearer. Here's AOC tweeting. As we've warned, SCOTUS isn't just coming for abortion. They're coming for the rights to privacy. Roe rests on, which includes gay marriage and civil rights. Mansion is blocking Congress by codifying Roe, blah, 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 blah. But I want to point to the bottom here, which is the tweet she's, quote, tweeting, which says, Alito's draft opinion explicitly criticizes Lawrence versus Texas, which legalized sodomy, and Obergefell versus Hodges, legalizing same-sex marriage. He says that, like abortion, these decisions protect phony rights that are, quote, deeply rooted in history. Hmm. That's a pretty compelling argument. I mean, they are, I mean, he's got a quote, right? It's a quote from the actual ruling. That's pretty powerful. So let's look into that quote a bit, shall we? Because this is what has happened in this particular case. You see, Samuel Alito is not an idiot. He is not a Tammy Duckworth or, um, you know, Maisie Hirono. He is a guy who thought this out a little bit, maybe read it. Maybe he read his own opinion, unlike Joe Biden reading his own opinion. And basically what he did was recognize that this type of argument might just be around. If he's going to go through Roe versus Wade, perhaps, just maybe, a bunch of idiots will get on television and say all these other cases are threatened. So there's a three-step process that has occurred, and this has all occurred in the last week. Here is the three-step process. Number one, Justice Alito realizes people will claim his ruling intends to overturn gay and interracial marriage rights along with abortion. Number two, Justice Alito scripts specific language into the ruling to clarify that gay and interracial marriage will not be affected along with abortion. And then step number three, people on the left lose their minds and claim anyway that Alito intends to overturn gay and interracial marriage rights along with abortion. How can I say that, though? We just heard the quote where he specifically went after gay marriage. That's what Alito did, right? We've learned it from a quote tweet from AOC. It's got to be true. Well, let's take the very specific language written in to Alito's draft ruling, which I should note is not official. This has not actually occurred yet, and that is an important thing to remember. Here is, I'm going to give you the full context. You don't have to read the full 63 pages or the 98 pages with references. You don't, you just have to read a little more than AOC. And I know that's a high hurdle to clear. We're talking about five or six words per day. But yeah, you got to go that far here on this one. Here it is. Casey relied on cases involving the right to marry a person of a different race. <gasps> there it is. The right to marry while in prison, the right to obtain contraceptives, the right to reside with relatives, the right to make decisions about the education of one's children, the right not to be sterilized without consent, and the right to, in certain circumstances, not to undergo involuntary surgery, forced administration of drugs, or other simil substantially similar procedures. Respondents and the Solicitor General also rely on post-Casey decisions like Lawrence versus Texas, here it is, he's mentioned it, and Obergefell versus Hodges, these attempts to justify abortion through appeals to a broader right to uh, autonomy and to define one's concept of existence prove too much. Those criteria at a high level of generality could license fundamental rights to elicit drug use, prostitution, and the like. See, they were right. The criticism is right there in the ruling. We should stop right away. The problem, though, is we haven't even got to the quote yet. Remember the quote from the AOC tweet? Let's see if I don't know. It's the first sentence of this next paragraph. None of these rights 
has any claim to being deeply rooted in history. Get it off the screen, get it off the screen, quick, 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 before anybody reads anything else. Because if you stop right there, you might be able to justify some of the 50 sots of sound pieces that we've played today. Maybe you could justify the AOC tweet if you stopped right there. But the problem is, the ruling doesn't start, stop right there, it keeps going. Now, let me give you what it says after, immediately after the line that AOC quoted. Here it is. None of these rights has any claim to being deeply rooted in history. What sharply distinguishes the abortion right from the rights recognized in the cases on which Roe and Casey rely is something that both of those decisions acknowledged. Abortion destroys what those decisions call potential life and what the law at issue in this case regards as the life of an unborn human being. None of the other decisions cited by Roe and Casey involve the critical moral question posed by abortion. They are therefore an opposite. They do not support the right to obtain an abortion, and by the same token, our conclusion that the Constitution does not confer such a right does not undermine them in any way specifically outlined that all this this hubbub that you've seen on TV and on social media is false. He specifically addressed it in the opinion. And you might say, well, what does that mean? I mean, maybe uh, they could overturn it anyway. I suppose you could say that. However, all of the conservative justices are signing on to this opinion that says what I just read you. It says it does not affect those other uh, cases. So unless you think the liberal justices are going to start taking those rights away, you got nothing to worry about here. Once again, let me give you the three steps of how this went down. First, Samuel Alito decided, hey, we, uh, where's the text here? Here we go. Samuel Alito says, Justice Alito realizes people will claim his ruling intends to overturn gay and interracial marriage rights along with abortion. Step two, Justice Alito scripts specific language, I just read it to you, into his ruling to clarify that gay and interracial marriage will not be affected along with abortion. And step three, people on the left lose their minds anyway and claim Alito intends to overturn gay and interracial marriage rights along with abortion. And in fact, it was the very next paragraph. They literally quoted the line before he specifically said what they are claiming would not happen and then left out the part where he said it wouldn't happen. This is how ridiculous this is. They absolutely know what they're doing. Well, some of them do. I mean, I think quite clearly we've decided Tammy Duckworth doesn't and you know, maybe not Joe Biden and AOC we all know is an idiot, but some of those people knew exactly what they were doing and they did it anyway. And, you know, the, the Biden administration can come up with their ministry of truth all they want. But it's the ministry of Stuth that brought to you the facts about this matter. And so you can jam it in the faces of all the idiots when they bring up this point. It specifically says it will not affect those other cases. Just, just like Alito wrote. There is absolutely nothing to worry about in this particular case. That is the beginning and the end of the Stooth. You know, my mom, my wife, both love GenuCell. Yeah, GenuCell. It's uh, the best in skincare. It's, we're talking about the stuff that... Uh, makes you look, uh, your skin looks smoother, makes you look younger, uh, and really in, and shows major, major effects almost immediately. GenuCell has extended your chance to get their most popular package for 60% off right now at GenuCell.com. During this limited time opportunity, you can get their brand new Ultra Retinol Cream for maximum anti-aging benefits with your purchase. Uh, only this one-of-a-kind formula can deliver all the anti-aging benefits of retinol without any of the harsh side effects. So you can say hello to looking your best and goodbye to fine lines, wrinkles, crow's feet, under eye bags, even red blotchy skin. 
Results you'll love, guaranteed, or your money back. No risk here. That's the GenuCell promise. You can join GenuCell's Best in Class Rewards program as well at checkout for an extra 10% off your order today. And you'll also receive a complimentary sample gift set. Go to GenuCell.com slash stew right now. You'll get up to 60% off world-class skincare. And right now, every most popular package includes GenuCell's immediate effects as well for results in as little as 12 hours. Again, this is guaranteed. Go to GenuCell.com slash stew. It's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash stew. GenuCell.com slash stew. I'm joined once again by religious zealot Dan Andros, managing editor for Faithwire. He's also a homeschooling zealot as well. Lots of zealots. Uh, he's Skyping in from a homeschool conference at the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. Dan, how's it going? It's going great. Yes, we are zealoting all over the place. So um, we are here with all of the other homeschooling families who have fled public schools. And uh, this, is, this is the mass exodus. It has led us here. <laughs> <laughs> Did they put you on an ark to get you away from public school? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's the way it works. Two uh, of you. We all hop on and we just and we watch <laughs> as the uh, floods, the floodwaters rise. And- <laughs> A lot of people will sink to the bottom of the ocean. I will say a lot of uh, public school parents, I think, feel underwater right now. And it's uh, the water has have been rising over the past couple of years. Before we get into the homeschool conference here, I'm fascinated by this by the Ark Encounter thing. Like, is this is that what I'm seeing behind you an Ark? Yes, I am in Ken Ham's office right now. (laughs) Uh, Their green room here. And that is uh, Noah's Ark right behind us. It is. Honestly, this is truly an amazing place. If you have not been here and um, you're a Christian, even if you're not a Christian, you, you've got to come here. It's honestly ridiculous. When you're, I don't know, from what you can gather or glean from the from the window behind me, but it's just, it really is a sight to behold in person. Uh, and uh, you, you really just get a sense of the biblical, biblical account of what happened um, uh, to Noah and the flood. And it's just, it's remarkable. Is it like, is it built to scale essentially? Yes. Yes, because of course in the Bible there is, you know, there is uh, uh, instructions and there are, you know, details. And so, to the best of their ability, obviously there's creative license that is taken on some things, such as, you know, how how would they feed the animals? They have kind of all these ideas and 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 kind of structured it in a way that that would make logical sense. And it's amazing. It's amazing because when you can see it, you know, all the kids' books show like a little tiny boat with with big giraffes like sticking their heads out the window. Right. Uh, but when you see it like this and you, you can you say, oh, yeah, I could see how they could get all the kinds, you know, could have got all the kinds on there, uh, especially when you take young ones for the bigger animals, et cetera. So it's it's an amazing place. It's, it's awesome. OK, so you are there for a homeschool conference. And, you know, look, I at some points in our history, maybe homeschooling conferences wouldn't be completely filled. Maybe they wouldn't be super popular. After the past couple of years, homeschool conferences have to be like the hottest ticket in town. Oh, yeah. I mean, homeschooling numbers have been on the rise for decades now. And I mean, think back to Common Core, Stu. We obviously covered that together many times. And just that people were scratching their heads going, what is going on with that? Um, So that's kind of for us where some of the journey began, you know, just looking at, you know, a better way to train up your kids. But then, you know, we started feeling convicted about, hey, maybe we need to be the ones you know, God's calling us to be the ones that are speaking into our children and not somebody else for eight hours a day. Uh, and so that's kind of what led us to it. But yeah, the the, the numbers are growing. And uh, now you see they're just basically, so the, so the fire was already there, but now, now activists is, have essentially just dumped gasoline all over <laughs> that fire and you have a blazing inferno going on in these, in these schools. It's crazy. I mean, uh, I don't know if you saw the latest clip from one of these school board meetings where a mom is reading from one of these books that is sexually charged, just overly graphic. And the, they actually tell the board member says, hey, hey, stop reading that in here. This That is grotesque. And it's like, uh, this is what you have in the school and the parents aren't allowed to hear it in the, in the session. It's insanity. Yeah, you know, it's interesting how those things constantly get summarized by the media, which is conservatives and religious zealots are into book burning. That's basically the way that story would get summarized on MSNBC or CNN. But like they they wouldn't even put the actual quotes from the book on MSNBC or CNN, let alone uh, in front of a school board meeting. And that, yet they expect kids to just digest this stuff. Yeah. 
yeah, it, it's totally upside down. But but that's there's that's just one issue. I mean, there are so many things that that schools are teaching your kids uh, that are just completely backwards. And especially from a Christian perspective, um, it, they don't start with God's word as the beginning of your understanding. It starts with man's word. And so you, you go off the rails almost immediately. And, and now you see it. You know, my daughter just went in to take the SATs and she went into the public school and she was just, you know, uh, uh, kind of reading all the all the stuff on the wall. And it's just like LGBT this and all of these secular things just bombarded on them. And, you know, it to me, it seems like a fool's errand to try to throw our kids into that situation and go, you know what, I'm going to let them be the to be the salt of the light in that situation. And um, it's, you know, we're asking too much of our kids on that front. Now, you and I, of course, went to went to school together, uh, high school together, and we were perfectly well behaved and never made any mistakes. And I'm sure we yeah. would have handled the situation well, but young, younger kids today, maybe not as much. Uh, um, so let me uh, let me go to uh, let me go to the CRT part of this, because, you know, one thing that's always driven me nuts about, um, I guess you'd call them, uh, people, they'll call themselves at least Christian identitarians, people who basically, I would argue, are white supremacists, and they, they seem to find some basis for this in faith. And it's like, when I look at the Bible, the most, uh, it is ultra clear that you should not be judging people on the color of their skin. Now, yeah. the public schools want to uh, have people come in here and, and make skin color be the most important thing. And this is just another reason why parents are turning to homeschooling. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, again, it's another thing that just doesn't make logical sense at all. We are all part of the same race. We're all part of the human race. And we have just different levels of melanin in our bodies. <laughs> and so when you start teaching people to do the exact same thing that honestly they're complaining about with you know, racists, who are racist against African Americans and, and other races, and you're just asking them to do that in the reverse, it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense to just heap shame over people to to say that you are, you know, you have some sort of privilege and you know you have these advantages in this situation. And there's no real outcome there. There's no real actual uh, end goal in all of that. It's just kind of to hold it over their heads and say, ah, you had all those privileges. And you say, okay, well, now what? And you just say, well, I'm just gonna hold that over your head and and just beat you with it until I get what I want. And it's not even clear what it is that they want exactly. And so it's just a message that's muddied. It's confusing, uh, illogical. And yeah, like, like you said, when you look at the Bible, it's completely wrong. Have you get a, do you get a sense, Dan, at the conference, like what is the percentage of people there that are there because of one of these big issues that's been in the news? And I'd include, you know, CRT and sort of the gender stuff and all of that, but also specifically COVID. I mean, COVID being the situation where all these schools were closed down, parents were kind of forced to take this inside the walls of their house for a little while, and they saw how bad much of the schooling was, how bad the uh, distance learning was, and a lot of parents jumped into the homeschooling uh, arena because of that. Are you seeing Are you seeing that at the conference? Yeah, well, I mean, I've been busy chasing my own little rugrats around, so I haven't had a chance to pull everyone here. We've talked to a few families, and they all seem like they're relatively new. I think if you're at a conference here and you've come to the Christian mecca of of uh, Ken Ham's <laughs> Wonderland here yeah. in Kentucky, I think you've been pretty far down the homeschooling road. I think those ones that are um, that are just coming in now are probably still just trying to figure it out and, and maybe haven't quite gotten this far yet. But yeah, I mean, I hear that all the time. I mean, I've seen people in our small group in church that just had to yank their kids out of school because it's just gotten so obnoxious. Hmm. I mean, there's always been a bias in, in public education and all these spheres of life where the left wing sort of uh, runs a lot of those spheres or at least has a majority in there. It's, it's, that bias has always been there. But it's, uh, we've talked about this too, but since George Floyd, it sort of just leapt into overdrive. And now it's full-blown activism. Like same, you see with companies, Coca-Cola, Disney, everybody else, instead of just being a little biased on an issue, they've now, and actually on companies, you know, in the past, they would actually just say, no, no, we don't want to get into the controversy. And so when there's a controversy, they just sort of play it neutral. Now they've been successfully bullied into actually having to go along with whatever the mob says. And so we've seen that shift. And I think that has really driven a lot of people to say enough is enough. And I would just say this, Stu. You know, I keep seeing these clips of parents begging to the school boards to stop this stuff. And I would just say and encourage these parents to investigate 
alternative options, homeschooling, a Christian school, and stop begging for scraps from Caesar's table. You know, it's what are you doing? I mean, mm. the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. These schools are not going. They don't care about your Christian values. They don't care about your conservative values. Stop pretending like that this has an actual chance of working, that they're going to listen to you because they're not. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think, you know, we've seen so much activism. We just had a, a, a you know, there's some a bunch going on today. There's a bunch this weekend, a bunch of these school board elections where, you know, parents have woken up uh, to a large degree and they've put uh, candidates forward that are going to be at the school board and managing the curriculum that I think will really improve things. But like, it's not the ideal solution, right? Like, you know, this is like, it's, 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 it's great to take something that's really bad and make it better. But yeah. when, you ha when you're talking about your kids, I mean, no parent is looking for that option. They want the thing that is the best for their kids. Everybody wants the best for their kids. And I think because it, it look, Homeschooling can be daunting to some people. Some people can't afford, um, you know, uh, private school. There are a lot of uh, issues. There are a lot of reasons to, that this can be difficult. But I, that's why I've always found your story really interesting because, you know, you guys jumped into this, um, you know, when you did not have a lot of money. You did, you know, your wife left a, a really good job to do this. You guys decided to make this a priority and sacrifice a bunch of stuff to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, we really did. And we just we just made that decision, Stu, at some point uh, where you say, you know what, I'm going to be the primary influence in my child's life. And I think that is what God, you know, really calls us to do. And so, um, you know, and at the very least, you know, especially from a Christian perspective, like I said, you want to be uh, you want your kids to be learning things from that starting point of, uh, you know, God as your foundation, because if you start with man's you know, ideas as your foundation, it's going to be competing. It's going to be at odds with your worldview. And make no mistake about it, there is no, you know, neutral worldview out there, right? Like, if you don't have God at the center of your worldview, um, you know, you're going to have something else at the center of your worldview. And a secular worldview puts man at the top of that heap and, and all of their ideas. And so you're going to be constantly grinding against the things that are being taught at your school. And so you, you know, the, the best way, honestly, to do it is to make that sacrifice and to, you know, really invest in your children. And if you're a Christian, that's really, I think, what God is, you know, commanding you to do. Uh, what, do you have any idea what the uh, turnout is for this thing? Oh, it's been great. I mean, I think there's, uh, they mentioned it at one of the talks, but I think there's two, they had to add another conference. So there was one conference that sold out like immediately, <laughs> and then they added a second one, and that one sold out pretty quickly too. I think it's like 2,500 people at each conference. So wow, you know, you're looking at 5,000 people in the neighborhood, something something like that. I don't know the exact numbers, but I think that's approximate. All right. Uh, yeah. But before we go, uh, do we have any commentary on the uh, Celtics future? Woo! Let me just say, I did not sleep last night because the Celtics were, if they lost, it would have been bad. Their season would have essentially been lowered down 3-1, but um, they're keeping me awake at night. I was not able to sleep. Too much adrenaline, too much Twitter muscles after. I, 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 I like the Celtics' chances. I don't like to get into, they're going to do it. I'm not that fan that's just going to just you know, will it into existence with cockiness. I'm cautiously optimistic here, but things look good. Spoken like a true conservative, never uh, believing that good things will happen. Uh, Dan Andros, <laughs> uh, managing editor of Faithwire. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. And uh, make sure you check, where do people go to check out the conference? Do you have any idea? Um, yeah, just go to Ark Encounter. Uh, just Google Ark Encounter and, and you'll see it on there. Um, I, I, I forget if it's a .org or a .com, to be honest with you. But just Google up Ark Encounter, Ken Ham, Answers in Genesis, and you should, uh, you should see the info there. All right, Dan, thanks for coming on. All right, thank you, Stu. Well, it's been kind of a crazy couple of weeks here in the world of cryptocurrency, and people are like, oh, I just saw an article today. Crypto is dead. It's dead! Uh, how many times do we have to read the same story? Do they just, j just change the date? Because that's the, change the date and change wherever uh, Bitcoin is on that particular day. That's how they operate these uh, at these mainstream media corporations, where they keep telling you that crypto is dead. And you know, if you believe that, you may have sold at a low point and lost money. 
if you every single person who's held on to uh, Bitcoin has uh, has made money uh, because it's been going up and up and up and up. One of the things we've seen um, from, uh, was Tika Tawari back in 2016 saying it's going to go up. It did. It had a crash after that. And people said, oh, now it's dead. And Tika said, no, it's going to go up to like 40,000. Well, it went up to 40,000. It went beyond 40,000. It's now drifted around 30, mid 30s. Uh, this might be the time for you to get in. You're not too late here. This is the biggest thing I hear about people talking about crypto. Ah, it's already started. It was like, you know, I sh if I got in five years ago, it would have been great. Well, yeah, sure, that would have been great. But it's, not, it's a good time to get in. Do your research, figure it out, and, and understand if it's right for your family and sign up for Tika's Palm Beach letter right now at BigTReport.com. It's BigTReport.com for Tika Tawari's Palm Beach letter. Understand crypto, BigTReport.com. Actors are dumb. I mean, actors can act, but actors are dumb. And you might say, well, I know this one person. He's a smart actor. And he might be smart for an actor, but overall, he's dumb. That's just the truth. I'm sorry. If you happen to be an actor and you think you're smart, you're dumb. At least that's my impression today. James Cromwell, who is an actor, and quite a good actor, actually. He's in uh, the show Succession. You might recognize him here as we show him in this video complaining about Starbucks by gluing his hand to a Starbucks counter. Now you might say, well, that sounds rational, okay? And if that's you, you're probably a dumb actor. But if you're a normal person saying, hey, that sounds really rational because Starbucks, gosh darn it, they charge too much for their coffee or they, they murder millions of beans every day or whatever your complaint is, well, unfortunately, that's not what his complaint was. His complaint was he wants vegan milk. And you might say, well, wait a minute. Doesn't Starbucks have vegan milk? Already, I would say they've gone out of their way to take care of James Cromwell and people who really, really want vegan milk. I mean, a giant chain. You got to believe that, like, Starbucks is probably the number one purchaser of vegan milk in the world, right? Like they are basically supporting this entire industry. However, however, James Cromwell has an issue, not that they don't have vegan milk, because they do. In fact, they have multiple kinds of vegan milk. What they don't have is the exact same pricing structure between regular milk and vegan milk. And that is why this actor has glued himself to the Starbucks. Here's the footage. Native and African Americans cannot digest cow's milk. Starbucks what? makes them pay more. Wait, what? Stop this. And the blood and save the cows. And the vegan and the now. And save the blood and save the cows. And the vegan and now. Okay, so he's, <laughs> he's glued himself to the counter. And what was his point that Native Americans and African Americans can't digest cow's milk? I, I am not a Native American or an African American, but I will say I didn't know that. If that's true, that is mildly interesting, um, but that's about it. Uh, certainly not something you glue yourself to. I, they've already, come, how many different types of milk are there at Starbucks? Do you go, how many types of milk are there? They've got soy milk, they've got like oat milk, They've got, I, I feel like I hear people come up with like orders of multiple dozens of types of milks that aren't regular milk. This is pretty impressive when it comes to milk varieties, yet there we are. Okay, I'm gone way too long on this story. Um, let me skip to Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Too many good things have happened to Tom Brady, okay? Too many. You, you get a certain amount of things that are good that happen in your life. Tom Brady has taken everyone's good things and he's just taken them all into his life. So you get none of them. All of our lives suck because Tom Brady has taken all the good things from everyone's life and hoarded them in his existence. He's got like 65 Super Bowls. He's dating, a, married to a supermodel. And now, after he's decided to unretire and come back and play again, just so we get to see him play one more time. And that's already agonizing enough. But now he has a deal set up for after he retires. A broadcasting deal. The details came out today. I actually thought it was an Onion story when I saw it. Tom Brady, 10 years 
$375 million to broadcast on Fox Sports. Now, if you've ever heard Tom Brady give an interview, he has never in his entire life said something interesting. He is a giant zilch in these interviews. He does these interviews every week with, uh, I think, uh, Jim Gray. And in the middle of the radio broadcast, and he never says anything interesting. It's always the typical, like, oh, well, you know, they're a very good team, and they're very well built, and we had a tough time, and we did our best, and, and I tell you. It's just like the generic cliche interview over and over and over again. And now he's going to get $375 million after he's done playing football. It's a travesty. It's a sham. It's a mockery. It's a travesty sham mockery. Back in a second. If you've just signed a 10-year, $375 million contract, you don't have to care about your credit score. But if you don't have that kind of cash in your future, you might need to learn the three-week rule. Now, this is the best financial advice ever. Just wait three weeks to buy the car, the mortgage, uh, the, the major purchase. Why three weeks? Because ScoreMaster in three weeks can help you get your credit score higher so you save money. Now, if you have $37.5 million a year uh, for a job, for an entire decade guaranteed for a job you've never done before, I guess you don't have to worry about the 61 points that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, that they can, the scoremaster can add to your credit score. Maybe you don't have to care about that if you got three hundred seventy-five million dollars uh, coming in. Uh, Sixty-one points is a lot of points. It's even more than the Philadelphia Eagles scored in Super Bowl Fifty-Two, defeating Tom Brady forty-one to thirty-three. Scoremaster technology was developed by credit scientists uh, who boost your credit score uh, higher than you thought was possible, faster than you thought was possible. It's easy. It only takes about a minute to get started, and you don't have to wait months for your best credit score. Try ScoreMaster today, unless you're Tom Brady. See how many plus points you can add to your credit score now. Go to scoremaster.com slash stew. Scoremaster.com slash stew. Do it now. Scoremaster.com slash stew. Tom Brady not included. We've been talking a lot about liars today. Our country and especially the current administration, is just chock full of them. Now, as Will Smith proved, it is generally considered uncouth to walk around slapping people, unless, you know, unless they're, they're into that. No judgment, Jeffy. None at all. But since we can't physically strike the people spreading disinformation, then we'll just have to rely on those we know delivering the truth. Places like Blaze TV. If enough of, uh, enough of us gather on platforms like this that have an actual obligation to their listeners, to their viewers, to honesty, then eventually the others will fa fall away. Uh, BlazeTV.com is the place to go. You can go there now and uh, tell your friends as well so that we can once again shift our national focus to the truth. And right now you can get 10 bucks off a subscription by visiting BlazeTV.com slash Stu and entering the promo code Stu because that's how they know. You like this stupid show. And remember, leave the slapping to irrelevant celebrities and their shiny-headed wives. Okay, so here's what happened. NASA has come up with a new way to find some aliens and hopefully lure them to Earth, which sounds like a terrible idea even if you could accomplish it. But they're trying to accomplish it. And what better way to make aliens come to Earth than to send them porn. Yes, we've decided, apparently, NASA has decided to send pictures of naked people into space to get those aliens all revved up so they come to Earth and check out the situation. Here are the pictures. Uh, there's a little DNA there as well, but then there's a picture. We blacked it out because that was just, it's too explicit. But it's basically a naked man and a naked woman waving at the aliens, which honestly, like, I, I don't think, th they might just say, hey, you know, that's a little gross and we don't want to show up, which might be the best possible option here. All right, we'll see you tomorrow.